In this video, you will learn how to fix overstress in the beams or in simple words, pass a failing RCC beam. So there are few tips shown how to control overstressing in the beam. If shear and torsion combined exceed the beam strength, hence make the beam torsionally flexible. That means slab will absorb all the torsion itself and beam will not take much part in resisting. If the main steel exceeds the beam's limits, so try applying end releases to the beam. Practically, it will design beams with enough bottom steel, so it will be able to resist the applied moments. Or make column base supports as fixed, reducing the sway of the structure, hence lesser the moments. If beam are failing in irregular pattern, try checking whether they are designed for special condition. Apply sway intermediate from overrides if seismic zone is less than three. If beam failing in flexure, that is main steel exceeds overstress too, so try increasing beam depth. If beam failing in shear, so try increasing beam depth or width of the beam based on architecture restrictions. If beam failing in deflection, then increase the depth. Now we will see how each of these works for passing a beam. So consider this structure shown. It is a ground plus three story structures. That is four story. So the modeling has already been done in order to save the time and just focus on how to pass the beam. So I'll be showing the sections applied for the frame members only. So the sections used in the beams here are shown. While for the story 3, story 2 and story 1 are as well shown. The beam sections are taken uniform. Now for the column cross section we will have to toggle the view. The sections used for the interior and exterior columns are shown which have already been defined for the structure. Now we will further modify the structure. Assigning the property modifiers using ACI code 315, 318 as in previous videos we have been using it. Now again selecting the columns that is the part of the frame and assigning the property modifiers to the columns using the ACI code that is 0.7 times gross moment of inertia now selecting the slab property and then assigning the property modifiers to the slab using ACI 318 chapter 10. As shown in the previous videos, the link to complete ETAPS tutorial is given in description. So now the structure is already modeled. The load pattern is defined as follows. We will go to story 1 and the loads are specified as 40 PSF live and 36 PSF as super dead imposed load. Similarly for the other stories, the load is defined in a similar manner, assigned to the slabs. Now we will assign diaphragm to the slabs. So that literal earthquake force is distributed 
to the lateral force resisting components when the earthquake arrives. I will go to view reward selection preferences. The load combinations have already been defined for the concrete frame design. Now for design combinations, we will use the default combinations and the value of SDS. We are using ACI 318 2014 code in this video. The value of design system SDS is 2.5 times CA value as per defined earthquake load case. The CA value shown here is 0 0.28. So 2.5 times multiplied by 0 0.28 gives the value of SDS which we will incorporate here while the rest of the values will be as per used Framing type is sway intermediate. That is why I pressed cancel. We won't be modifying it. We will be modifying it when the member fails. So now running the analysis after saving of the model. and then we will go to the design part let's turn off visibility of the other objects other than beams and then design the beams let's go to story 3 and pass the beams of the third story first so you can see the periphery beams are failing the red color shows that the beams are overstressed. Similarly, a lot of beams in the bottom stories are failing as well. Let's start with passing the beams of the third floor or the fourth story it is. So you can see the overstress is number 45 that means the beam is failing in shear force. You can also see the design summary from here and also see the load combination used in design. So you can see the beam is considering torsion in its design and the shear force combined with torsion exceeds the maximum allowed limit. So we have to ignore torsion in beam design but in actual we won't be ignoring it we would make the slab strong enough in the design so that the torsion won't be transferred to the beam but we will not be ignoring the shear force our torsion will be taken by the slabs itself now we are making beams torsionally flexible as shown in the initial part of the video we are using it to pass the beam now 
let's run the analysis and check whether the team passes or not. Now designing the concrete frame members. So you see the beams have passed. There is no shear failure or torsion failure right now. So that is how we pass the RCD beams of the third floor. And there is no failure. Now we proceed to the next story that is story number 2. So you see story that is story 4. So you see in story 4 we have failure of main steel. OS number 2 means that the main steel is exceeding the allowed limit for the beam. So you see number OS number 2 is exceeding at the top supports. That means the beam is taking enough negative moment that it will cause a failure in the beam. So in order to encounter this kind of problem, you may assign hinges to the beam supports. That will make the beam strong enough so that it will transfer all the moment in form of positive reinforcement. So we will now assign the hinges to the beam making it sort of simply supported and the bottom reinforcement will be designed strong enough that it will take all the moment let's try applying them in one beam and running the analysis So we have applied hinge in the beam so now negative moment will be very nominal or won't be at all as the beam is simply supported now and all the moments will be transferred in form of positive so you see positive steel has drastically increased and negative reinforcement has decreased which is also minimum reinforcement in the beam so you see the beam has passed now we will apply the similar technique to pass the rest of the beams We'll check here the end releases. So only a single beam is assigned with end release property. And the beam is passed. So we have to apply the same technique to pass the rest of the beams if it works so. Let's unlock the model and release the rest of the beams. What it will do that it will make the positive reinforcement high enough so that all the moment can be taken in the beam in form of positive reinforcement. So that is how we assign them the property modifiers as well as the end restraints. Now designing the beams. The design part takes a while. So now you see the beams assigned with end releases have passed but the rest of the beams have failed. 
as most of the negative moments have been transferred to them now so what we are gonna do we are going to apply the property modifier or end releases to those beams as well or try making the base of the structure as fixed I hope that will make the beams stable enough so that they pass as there is excessive negative moment coming in the beam and the last option should be considered increasing the beam size so for now we are running the analysis again making the column support as fixed at the bottom and the foundation will be designed for the fix now which would be the later part of course so now we will be designing the beams again and check if they pass So now you see the beams have passed making the columns base as fixed. But still we have few more things to try that how to pass a beam. So in order to implement those things we have to again fail the beam. Or you can say we will increase the loading on the structure so that the beams fail furthermore and then we can apply further techniques to pass the beams now intentionally we will fail the structure by increasing the load enough so that the beams do fail now increasing the live load from 40 psf or sdl load from 36 psf to 70 psf that is nearly twice of what was previously applied I'm increasing the live load as well so we have to select this slab as well first now increasing the live load from 40 psf to 50 psf now the load is increased so we will see if the beam fails now by upon increasing the load as the load will be transformed from slab to beams Now designing the concrete frame elements that includes beams so the beams are still passing but on the story 4 they are failing so you see so a special has been selected for this beam so we will try changing the special condition as we are not in zone 3 we are considering zone 2 for the case as i have shown the load pattern for earthquake in the starting of the video so you will see i will select the frame members and make the overrides as so intermediate by going to design and view improvise overrides and make them as so intermediate press ok so now we will run the analysis and design once again Now as we forgot to 
exclude the column from the design part so we are hiding them as in next video we will show how to pass the filling columns but for this video our concern is passing the overstressed beams so you can subscribe to the channel and be updated when that video comes around so you see the beams have now passed upon changing the perimeter so now we will see the other stories as well whether they have passed this or not so the apparently the structural beams are passing the check so we'll further increase the load and see if the beams fail let's go to story 1 and then apply the select the floors increase the loading to 100 psf and sdl from 70 psf to 50 so now that's the loading i am applying let's run the analysis and design We will see if the beams fail and we will apply the further techniques to pass them. And when no techniques work then finally we have no choice whether then to increase the cross section. So you see the beams are passing of all stories. Now what we are gonna do is we are gonna increase the load further until the beams fail. Now apply the slab loads. Let's make the SDL 100 PSF and then run the analysis again. I hope that would be sufficient enough to fail the beams right now. running the design so you see few beams have failed now and it's over stress 45 that means the beam is failing in shear force so you can see if we increase the cross section of the beam which i have already defined let's see if it passes with the increased cross section that was the beam which i revised right now so it is let's check whether it passes by redesigning it now you see by increasing the cross section from 8 to 8 by 18 to 8 by 24 the beam passes similarly we will do this for the rest of the failing beams but in actual practice the whole floor must comply with the architectural guidelines provided by the architecture which is unique for every structure or the restriction of the architecture the beams depth should be similar so that it's aesthetically pleasing 
let's see so the beams are passing at an increased cross section from 8 by 18 to 8 by 24 as there was no other option left apparently there may have been other options but the easiest is to increase the cross section for now also the most practical so you see the last beam is also passed in the next video I will be discussing how to pass the columns which are failing so I suppose there are a lot of columns failing in this structure so the complete beam design you can should see from the link in description that how we will design the beam now as we have passed the cross section dimensions for complete details tutorial see the link in description thank you for watching